This is the series where I take your suggestions and turn them into SCSS. It basically allows you to take a plain HTML element, like this button, and turn it from this into this. Hello everyone, my name is Philip, and welcome to episode one of this series where you guys will be putting my skills to the test and telling me what type of SCSS components I should make for the web. Now, because this is the first series, I thought that I'm going to pick the first thing that we do because obviously nobody knew about this. Uh, so I decided that, you know, today we might as well just create a laptop in the web browser. If any of you are ever in the career of a software developer, software engineer, and you ever want to create your own portfolio website, I thought it would be really cool to have a laptop on the website and inside the screen of the laptop you can just insert your own web page or product that you worked on or a screenshot of whatever you want. Uh, so I thought, you know, why not try and recreate a design of a MacBook in the web browser by just using SCSS. So without any further delay, let's get into coding this laptop. Uh, so let's just say that I want a container which is a height of 25% and a width of... Uh, um, maybe it actually would be even more beneficial to keep it at a constant size. So what we are going to do is set the height 300 pixels and set the width to like 400 pixels and see what it looks like. The next thing we want to actually do is, because obviously the edges are rounded, we want to add a border radius. 15 I think will be perfect. Cool. Now what we want to do is we want to engrave that, that middle screen inside it. Now we want to add some padding. We want the padding to be from the top, from the bottom, left and right. And then let's just give it a background color so we can see it. Yet again, lots of color choices. Let's go with Peru. Oh, okay. Uh, because here we're taking into account padding, uh, we need to calculate that so it doesn't go outside the borders. So now that actually should fit in quite well, which it doesn't. Why is it being H? Obviously, uh, we have to declare here that position will be relative to the container that we are in and the top will be 20 pixels and the left will be 10 pixels and that should be positioned in the middle of the container at this point point. and this is exactly what we want let's just change this background color to white so it looks a little bit better there we go wow look something is starting to come into place the way i want to look at this computer is kind of from this angle i want to i want to see it straight ahead Perfect, so now we will refer to our classes and we'll say this is the keyboard area. Actually, we want the width to be a little bit more because if we're looking at our computer from this aspect, it actually goes outside. Another background color, just so we can visualize it. Uh, let's go with prism, perfect. Now we have it appearing here because everything is kind of trying to be pushed into one, that one direction. So this will have to be turned into the div. Uh, class name, we'll give it a class name of, uh, well, actually we can call this main now, which would make more sense. And wrap everything inside main. You can display flex, but now what we want to do is we want that red thing to be underneath. And the way we do that is we just say that we have the flex direction. Instead of the generic row that it always selects, we're just going to pick column. And here we go. Actually, we can give it a position relative the bottom I want it to be like 10 pixels. And that's just going to shift it up like so. But what I was thinking is the base will be two parts. It's going to be a higher part and a lower part that's going to kind of curve around and create that really nice low curve at the bottom with like the little curve in for the thumb at the bottom of the laptop. So now that we have this bottom done, as you can probably see, there is that tiny little bit of gap down there. So we actually want to change the radius, but we want the top left-hand side and top right-hand side to be three pixels and the rest to be zero. So these guys actually match up together. Uh, the height of this, this one should be a bit less and we want it to curve in. We can have a border bottom right radius. And what that will do is it will curve it, as you could see. Let's just go 50-50 on each one. Let's, uh, let's take the risk and see what happens. Might look really good, you never know. Okay, I like that. Okay, perfect. Let's just give it a, a nice background color. Uh, let's say I want this slate gray. There we go. First of all, I think that this top bit is a little bit too big. So make them kind of even, I think that will look nicer. 
Now we want to add that little notch here for allowing your finger to pick up the screen. So that notch will exist inside the, the keyboard and we're gonna call it notch. Uh, it's going to be a width of like 100 pixels, height of like six pixels. And then we know that it kind of uh, curves when it goes to the bottom. Okay, let's make it this color and we're good. Another thing I want to do is obviously we want that little notch down at the bottom here which is all kind of grayish and it has some text inside it. Okay, so somehow I have managed to fix all of that and make it look better and change the colors a little bit so it kind of matches more. I'm kind of still thinking that maybe I want the bottom lighter, much lighter than whatever we have. 6, 8, 6, 8 and 6, 8, 5, 8, 5, 8 and 5, 8, 6, 0, 6, 0, 6, 0. And let's see what that actually looks like. Okay, actually, I think that looks much better. Uh, so maybe let's do five zero. That's just a half a shade darker. Perfect. So the next step is we want to add that little logo uh, at the bottom of the screen. And inside here, we just literally want to add a span. Just a plain text saying, uh, let's just say my channel name, because why not? Now we want to position it in the center. So with this bottom strip, if we give it also display flex and then we align the items in the center and we justify the content in the center. Uh, we probably want it a tiny bit smaller still. Now we can give it the bottom of like two pixels just so we can kind of see it. Awesome. And basically this is what it currently looks like, which is cool. Well, actually, let's just be more experimental and just call it Philips MacBook Pro. Now looking at it, I would probably make the text still a little bit, tiny bit smaller. Okay, that is much better. And then obviously we want the white to be, to have a more of an opacity. So RGBA. 255, 255, 255, and let's go with like 0.7. And that should look pretty nice. Yes, this is exactly what we wanted. Okay, so basically we kind of finished our laptop now and what I'm going to do is try and just re-enhance everything, make it look a little bit more realistic and try and get it looking all nice. So in general, that actually looks pretty decent. So the last thing we need to do is just take a screenshot that I already have of my background and just put it in and see what the final product looks like. But before we get there, let's just clean up our code a little bit. We know that the notch is not used, so we can just close it here. Uh, in the same way, we know that our base is not used, so we can just, or doesn't have anything inside it, so we can just close it up there. And then obviously inside our screen, what we need to do is import an image with a specific source that we're gonna get to. We need an alt to describe what the image is. So let's just call it our background and the source. So we need to import the source, drag the image into here, uh, and then we can say we want the background.png. So let's just say background here, and let's just navigate. Okay, and it's obviously way too big, so we need to fix that. We say that we have an image and we just can give it a width of 100% and that is all we're looking for. Refresh and boom, look at that. The laptop is finished and it's looking very, very fairly decent, actually very realistic. So yeah, that is it. That is how we make a laptop in SCSS. I hope you guys enjoyed it. If you did, please make sure to smash the thumbs up button and subscribe if you haven't yet. And uh, please, please, please leave suggestions down below of what you guys would like to see me make next in SCSS. But for now, guys, thank you very much for watching. I hope you enjoyed the video and I'll see you in the next episode. Bye. What are you still doing here? I mean, if you stuck around for so long, you might as well just watch my two other videos. And if not, just subscribe and I'll see you there.